2 Cannon has been brought back, and it's an extremely slept on Pokemon. This thing is the standard old Route 1 normal flying type, but it does have some tricks under its beak. At base 120 attack, 2 Cannon can be a pretty decent threat with its signature move, Beak Blast. Beak Blast is a 100 base power flying move that takes two turns to fire off. On the first turn, it has priority to heat up its beak, and if the opponent makes contact, they get burned before we start blasting. It also has the ability Skill Link. This guarantees that multi-hit attacks hit the maximum amount of times. This pairs nicely with moves like Rock Blast and Bullet Seed, and while it's not top tier, 2 Cannon can be a lot of fun. Alright look, nobody ever shows love to 2 Cannon, but that's what I'm all about. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second, I promise you will not regret it. And I've got a super fun video for you today with a cool team, let's go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Swampert, as I decide to lead off with the Araquanid. And we have a little bit of an interesting dynamic here. Old Bubble Buddy comes out, and while I do want to set up my Sticky Web, I know that they do have the Hatterene in the back. And with Magic Bounce, they're just going to try to send that right back at me. So I figure, I'm too smart for your plans. I'm going to end up just going for the Leech Life here instead, expecting that switch. However, they just actually stay in and set up the Stealth Rock here, as I just go ahead and vampire the hell out of the Swampert for pretty much no reason, just to you know, like the way it tastes and do a little bit of chip damage here. So, I find myself in a situation where, okay, I can either go for some more damage, or I can just click that Sticky Web. No, wait, they're not going to switch into the Hatterene second turn, but as it turns out, they are going to end up switching, and yeah, in comes the hat, and I have been both bamboozled and hoodwinked at this point, and I figure, damn, now I just basically laid Sticky Web on my own side, they bounce it back, and that's honestly pretty rude over here. Caught in my own web as a spider, there's never been a more disappointing moment. But we will rebuild and bounce back. So here's the thing, Araquanid actually has a decent matchup here. I know that with my water bubble boosted liquidation, I can actually do over half to this thing. And I can also take hits pretty easily because my special defense is kind of nuts on this guy. So to actually just stay in, go for that psychic noise prevents me from healing, which I'm actually unsure if that blocks leech life like healing, but regardless, another liquidation does come close to knocking this thing out, and I figure it probably want to save this, but I'm just going to go for the biggest damage possible, and they are going to end up switching out here. So I've got some work to do. I put my own sticky webs up, which is really going to hinder my team, uh, but luckily I do have a rapid spinner, and they also don't have a ghost type to switch into it. So I know that I can spin away my own sticky web eventually, but they actually end up switching into the bridge staple remover, and I don't need any staples removed currently, but what I do need is some damn webs up. I figure if I can just lay the sticky web down at this point, I can at least level the playing field. I can then rapid spin later and be fine. So again, I can take special attacks all damn day long, take it right to the old bubble head as I do lay down the sticky web. They can't switch back into the hat at this point, and now the battlefield is feeling about sticky as hell. So here's the thing. I do want to switch out here. I'm basically just giving this thing so much stamina that uh, this Archaladon is going to be a little bit of a problem here. So I save the Araquanid for later. I'm going to end up switching right into Squidward. I know that even uh, with electric moves, I should be able to take attacks from this thing it doesn't, if it doesn't have any crazy boosts. Plus, my main priority is to spin around all crazy and clean up the damn mess that I did to myself. So, they do actually end up going for the Thunderbolt, and that does a solid chunk of damage. However, I also get the Para, and that is extremely annoying because I know that after recovery, I can take another Thunderbolt, but now the problem becomes, can I break through the Paralysis to get this Rapid Spin up? and I'm out here just fighting for my damn life. So, they go for another Thunderbolt here, and we do end up living it with 13 HP, and luckily I am able to break through, give him the old tentacle slap, and we do get rid of our sticky web. So, we do address one problem, except, however, now the next problem is that this thing is out here just boosting its defense, and this thing is bulky as hell, while also being able to, to hit pretty damn hard. So, I now have to figure out a plan <laughs> against this thing. Also, Tentacruel is going to be, you know, pretty much wasted at this point. So, I decide to just go for a knockoff in case they do something crazy. They do just stay in, go for that Dragon Pulse. And one important thing to note is, I don't see any recovery on this thing. And that means that this is probably going to be Assault Vest. Meaning its special defense is going to be crazy, along with that physical defense. So, what I decide to do is, I'm going to straight up bring in this thing's sun. We must reject modern technology, because <laughs> we have the old school version. I'm going to end up just going for the Body Press to get some damage. They actually end up body pressing me, so nothing wrong with a, a couple of big metal dudes body pressing each other. And we do <laughs> some decent damage here. I get this thing below half, but I'm going to need some considerable chip to be able to, to finish this thing off. And it also just gives it another stamina boost, which not only boosts its defense, but also boosts the power of body press. They decide to go for the Dragon Pulse there, which I do live, and I can get off one more press. So 
Honestly, Eviolite Duraludon has so much defense, it's super fun to use right now. A lot of people are obviously using Archaladon, but hey, listen, Eviolite goes crazy on this thing, and especially if you can get some, some defense boost, body press becomes crazy. But I'm obviously not able to get that thing going exactly how we planned. But what I did do is put this thing in range to where I can now bring in the Porygon Z and hopefully have enough damage to knock this thing out. So I figure I'm actually just going to go for the Terra Normal, bust out the old adaptability Terra Boosted <laughs> try attack and honestly there's not a lot in the world that wants to deal with this Porygon Z. With the choice specs it has literally so much damage and even though it's a resisted hit again with that uh, Terra boost and adaptability boost there's just stab all over the damn place so we stab the shit out of this Duraludon and that is, or sorry he's not he's not durable he's arch. He's, fuck this tape remover is dead essentially and thank god I was able to have just enough damage to knock that thing out. So we're feeling much better about our position here. The webs are gone, the big defensive wall is gone, and now they get a free revenge switch into the Swampert. So, this thing comes in, he does get tangled up in the sticky web, and I figure I'm just gonna go for another try attack here. With the specs, I, there's a chance that this actually knocks this thing out, depending kind of on the build here. So, I just throw the power of the elements at him. It does end up, in fact, living, and this allows it to go for a yawn, which is a bit unfortunate because Porygon Z, Loki kind of popping off here. Their only real switch in is going to be that Swampert if it's able to take the dry attack. But now, next turn, I fall asleep and we're way too fly with our diamond on our head to be falling asleep on these hoes. So what I decided to do is just switch right into the Arachnid once again. I know that I can take pretty much any attack from this thing and I could potentially start to leech life, get some spidey health back and have a nice little bubble buddy time. But they actually end up going for the flip turn. Nice little pivot move that Swampert now has access to, and they can figure out a matchup that they like, which they're going to end up bringing in the Serena. So, she is here for two reasons. One, have the fattest booty in the game, and two, being able to rapid spin away the sticky web. So, they do get the speed drop here, however, Araquanid is slow. I got a lot of legs, but they don't get going too quick. They do end up going for the rapid spin here, and actually end up knocking me out with the critical hit, which... I think mattered, I'm, I'm unsure, but regardless, I'm gonna say that it mattered because Leech Life would have absolutely destroyed that ass and healed a lot, but it is what it is. They now get rid of the Sticky Web and I must go into Porygon here. I know that it does outspeed me with that plus one uh, after the Rapid Spin, however, I should be able to take at least one attack from this thing and again, try attack just melts everything. So, they're gonna end up switching that thing out. They did what they needed to do in getting rid of the webs and they decide to basically just sack off the Swampert here. So try attack takes care of the pert, which is amazing. And honestly, one of my main goals at this point is to get in the two cannon. I look like I actually have a decent matchup on a lot, except for the fact that they do have the uh, the raging bolt in the back. And Buddy's actually just gonna come out right now. The neck is going crazy, and I am a little bit afraid of this little fella. But I also know that I should be able to potentially take an attack, and I'm honestly mostly afraid of this thing setting up combine. So I'm gonna end up just staying in, Go for that try attack as they actually go for the Terra here. They're going to go Terra Electric. If this thing didn't look ridiculous enough, puts the light bulb on its head. And that is going to be a nice little boost to its electric stab. But I am in fact faster. I can throw the old triangle at him. And it does not quite end up knocking this thing out. So that does allow them to end up going for the discharge. And Porygon Z is not the bulkiest little ducky fella. But I am able to take it. At least one of them. And at this point I am still in danger. This thing does have access to its move Thunderclap which is essentially just a, a special attacking electric, you know, sucker punch. So I can't possibly stay in here. I need Porygon Z. That thing is kind of one of my win conditions at this point. And I decide to end up switching into the Electivire. I figure, you know, either they discharge or they thunderclap here. They likely go for that thunderclap, which they do. Doesn't activate my motor drive, but I now have this thing in to where as long as it doesn't have a Calm Mind boost, I should be able to take an attack and then end up knocking it out in return. So. Raging Bolt likely does not want to play that shit, and so I'm just going to go for the knockoff. If they end up switching, that is amazing, and they do. They're going to conserve that thing for later. The, you know, Priority Thunderclap is one of the scariest things at this point, and they're basically forced to go into Hatterene. So, this thing comes in looking like a goofball in its crazy pointy hat. Knockoff is going to end up getting rid of the leftovers. Doesn't quite do enough damage to knock it out, but I can outspeed here and just super slam, the, super sell slam the hell out of it. Basically, Electivire puts a crazy wrestling move on him and down goes the Hatterene. So, now they're down to three Pokemon left, one of which being this Serena. This thing is actually a huge issue because if it can get up a rapid spin, it actually is gonna boost its speed to the point where it can outspeed the Porygon Z. So, what I'm gonna do here is just go right into the two cannon. Either it Trop Kicks or goes for that rapid spin and two cannon with that crazy ass beak is ready for both. So. 
they do end up going for the rapid spin and that gives them the plus one in speed but they don't likely have enough damage to be able to knock out the two cannon so I'm coming out here looking like I see what you did there buddy and I'm ready to just beak blast the hell out of him so anyway I started blasting I'm gonna go for that beak blast as they actually end up switching and they're gonna bring in Charizard so I do not have stealth rock up unfortunately however the switch is nice because I can heat up the beak turn one and then essentially I, since they switched I immediately get to fire off the beak blast and that is gonna do a lot of damage to the Charizard so the good news is for the Charizard, it does outspeed the two cannon, of course. But the bad news is he's about to get some Fruit Loops, whether he likes it or not. So <laughs> I can actually end up going for the Rock Blast here. And obviously I have five in the chamber with the skill link. They're going to go for that Air Slash. And we are bulky enough to live it and not flinch. Fire off a Rock Blast and we even keep four in the chamber, baby. One knocks it out, of course. Down goes the Charizard and two cannons out here taking its first name. So they are down to two Pokemon left. They have the Raging Bolt along with the Serena. And I have a toucan, just a regular old, just a regular old angry toucan over here. So I eat some leftovers, and they decide to bring in the plant shoddy. So Serena comes back in. This thing is still setting up full HP, and at this point, kind of is their best shot here. So I'm gonna end up going for the beak blast because that's what we do, baby. Um, essentially, I go first. I heat up the beak, allow them to touch me, and they're gonna actually get themselves a burn. So they actually end up going for the rapid spin. They really need the speed boost to be able to essentially sweep the rest of the game with this, but Toucan is able to live it, give him the burn, and it essentially overkill the hell out of this thing with that Beak Blast, which is amazing. So down goes the Serena. We burn him, basically just to pour some salt in the wound there. And the Toucan, again, is out here making shit happen. Now, we have one big obstacle and neck in front of us, and that is the Raging Bolt. We did get a lot of chip damage on, off on this thing, but if we play our cards right, the two cannon can absolutely slay the electric dragon. So, in comes old Crazy Neck, and here's where it gets a little bit interesting. Two cannon looks hilarious staring up at this thing like a toddler, but I predict them to go for the discharge instead of the thunderclap, knowing that I could potentially beat blast and block the priority, and instead just decide to spit some seeds at this thing. And luckily, with the skill link, five hits is barely going to be enough to knock out the raging bolt. So, two cannon out here doing the damn impossible. We needed every ounce of attack possibly to knock that thing out uh, but down it goes and the toucan out here displaying dominance with that five hits and that is going to be the end of the game so i thought it was just a super fun match you don't often get to see toucan do beak blasting shenanigans and i'm having a lot of fun with it let me know if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy and i will catch you next time peace out